not entirely sure, you know, how well SM is going to be able to deal with that pressure. All right. Well, we'll see if they're going to be able to deal with that pressure, if they're able to get into those items that they need, the early blink daggers, maybe the farm. Like, do you think then Troll Warlord foregoes the Battle Fury entirely and just goes for, like, straight fighting items and relies on Empower? I think that would make sense. I think we're, we're likely to see some kind of SNY Scotty kind of stuff, like old school, like true 6.83 Troll Warlord fashion, where you, you just build nothing but stats because Mask of Madness was completely broken at that point in time. Not sure if he'll make that item, but you know, that, that was kind of what people did in that meta. But I mean, obviously SM do have great potential to win late. Um, one good RP with an empowered troll is just devastating. And you can, it doesn't matter like how many items you have against the troll. If he, if he gets on you and he gets a couple of bashes with an empower, you're just a goner. Like, you're, you're just, you're going into the dirt. <laughs> well, moving out now across the map. It looks like everything is set up the way it's supposed to be just about. Um, my goodness gracious, man. I uh, always love to fix in the, the problems as they come up last second. Uh, but regardless, Cheshire Cat, Big Num over here in the side lane together. Going to be sending some creeps back. And it looks like it will be against the Troll Warlord and the Witch Doctor. Did you see that IX Mike tweet the other day, by the way? About what? He, tweet, he tweets like all the time. <laughs> he was tweeting that like, if you send three heroes to your safe lane uh, and there are not three heroes from your opponent in it, then you're playing Dota wrong. And he was talking about like the way that it affects regen and stuff you. like that. It is kind of speaking to me about like why we've been seeing so many more of the dual lanes, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, it's been that way for a long time. I mean, more often than not, even before that kind of change, it's like, it was really hard to perfectly utilize a tri lane anyway. Yeah. Like a lot of people did it poorly and didn't get the maximum benefit out of the lane well before that ever even happened. Yeah. And the only time it was really ever worth it to tri lane is if the enemy was tri laning and you knew that your lane would win or you knew that your 1v1 matchups were going to win. Right. And that was when you were like, ah, okay, now we can try a lane, because even if this isn't really efficient for us, we're getting something somewhere else. But yeah, that it's it's been a really long time since we've really seen like try lanes be a thing. Begins. I'm with you. Well, it does look like they're going to be able to trade off, uh, get all four runes? That, uh, what? Uh, okay. I mean, I guess they do have a level one Shen. They have but a thousand think, net worth lead. <laughs> I think at the very least they could have contested bottom, right? Yeah. I mean, it's tough. They, they do have a lot of stuns. Their level one is pretty freaking good. Hmm. Yeah, I guess the Rubik might have potentially died if they uh, if they were to try to contest that. So yeah, okay, four bounty runs. I wonder if Nahaz is around to tell us the stats on who wins. Because like you don't, you actually barely ever see a team get four bounty runs. And the send back here as well. They ended up getting the couple of them. It didn't look like they sent back the range though either. But this is still going to push pretty heavily uh, into the tower. So we're going to have a good start here, Cheshire Cat. But we talked about the pressure that could come. You may actually, as the Wick Dutcher, is going to try and go maybe for a courier snipe. And I think he's going to get it. Yeah, he saw it going on the way back. Okay, he noticed. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna wiggle it around. Nice little play there. Very head But as, as far as sending the melee creep back, that's actually what you want to do. Okay. Um, sending the melee creep back, they have substantially more life and armor. So even though the range creep does the most damage, if that creep is dead, the lane is gonna get shoved into your tower faster. And this is the, Yeah, the, the health lost in the wave is more than made up by the fact that the range creep does a little bit more damage. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. I like this play that we saw from Bignum as well. He took over one of the mud golems and then ended up taking over the second one. So he got extra uh, hurl boulders after the fact. It is going to lose a couple of those now to the witch doctor, um, but still pretty nifty. A nice way to be able to get extra value out of this. He's going to hurl some more boulders here. In the beginning of the game, they own. Yeah, they, they crush you. It's 125 damage a pop. Another one <laughs> is going all the way down My at 150 reward. HP. Took a ton. Yeah, you don't want to mess around with those golem babies. They they play absolutely no games. So be careful now. He doesn't end up falling down lower. They're going to throw out the Wild Wing Ripper over here as well. And we'll, we'll see if the Witch Doctor comes over. He is going to wrap around to try and find the stun on it. But Chen is there as well. And now we'll see if they can get into range. Not going to be able to find anything there. Uh, so that was a... Yeah? 
I was gonna say that was a lane saving cask. Like this troll is gonna suffer super hard in this lane. Because a witch doctor, like I said, even though he does have the cask, it's it's still very difficult because the Omni is getting pretty much exactly what he wants. You know, he, he's almost got the same amount of CS right now as the troll. He's level three. And the Chen is only gonna get, you know, stronger and stronger. Now fortunately Yume was smart enough to to sentry his own camp. Like he doesn't want the Chen being able to get something from here. And then obviously he can return back after walking to the jungle and stuff, but that takes more time. So then he doesn't uh, pressure the lane as much. But that that wild wing, if you leave that tornado up, that thing just crushes you. Like he would legitimately have to TP home <laughs> if that thing didn't get cast. That is uh, a lot of damage that can come out. And then he's just gonna run also here at the witch doctor and try and deal some damage. Not a ton of armor on this guy. Meanwhile. Aldrin Ripper is going to be taken over and transferred now as they pick up a Dark Hole Summoner. Trying to take down Mr. Vans for Snowball Ford, able to kill him off. First blood drawn First by Sasha. Yeah, really nice shards there from uh, Velier. Just completely trapped him in. He, he actually placed it so that the shards connected to the tree line, and he was like almost completely boxed, and he could only run forward, which was right into a burrow. Vans score there, trying to get a little bit of revenge, but not able to get into range for the lift. Radiant's so Sashlo will fully is escape. Attack. He is going to have to head all the way home, though. And it looks like with that, it's going to give some time to Elior, who might be in a little bit of trouble now himself and does still have the TP away, trying to get out of there. And, well, they're both out of the lane for the moment. Yeah, nice response, realizing that that's their only stun. Uh, we didn't really talk about the laning setup from the side of Gambit too much, like in regards to their mid and safe lane, but this is a really nice solution because, obviously, Viper knows that he's probably not going to have an amazing matchup against Mag. It's going to be, it'll be fine, but he doesn't want to put the Void against the Sand King because that lane is going to be really awful for the Void. So now he gets to pretty much time walk off all the harassment damage coming out from the Magnus that's not coming through in power, whereas Viper would pretty much just eat those Shockwaves and have to buy regen. So it's kind of like a win-win in regards to the, the laning department. So really cool stuff here from Gambit. I like that a lot, definitely. And the maxed out Shockwave is... Uh, maybe a chance to like find a kill or something. He does eat that one as well um, If he gets too low, but it's again predicated upon mistakes coming out from the void uh, We also have a lot of movement down here bottom. They're gonna try and pull the creep wave past and Ilior is now under fire from the Viper but Looks like he will be okay is Now just the orb of venom from the illusions on the tusks. That is painful for this Rubik. Yeah, there's not really much Ruby can do to this lane. He's even going back in, dude. He's crazy. They're thinking about it. And score in trouble. Forced to TP away. He is going to get out of there. But a lot of TPs used early on. I like the pressure, too. And this entire time, you know, Shatchelow, he, he got a double wave. He pulled two of the, the Radiant Waves to the tower. Got pretty much every single CS. And now he's, like, almost tying up the Omni in uh, overall, overall uh, CS. But, I mean, Cheshire Cat probably still having the best time of the offlaners just because he's already level five. And he's going towards those phase boots that we have seen so often on the Omnis here during the, the CIS qualifier. It just feels so good to have them, you know? You just hit them and you're fast. Is there, nothing's better in this game, Gabe, than being fast. Being fast, I like that. Gotta go fast, Ricky Bobby. Uh, yeah, I got phase boots coming up for the Sand King as well pretty soon here. Uh, but you mentioned that the Omni Knight able to run around. They are actually able to force the Troll Whirler to TP back to his tower too, just because of the amount of pressure this Chen is putting on. But it does feel to me like they haven't been able to find that many like kills at all with it. I mean, still, obviously, there's no kills on the board for him. Is that something that they're going to be missing right now? Or do you think that they still feel okay about the way the game's going? I think as long as the Omni is having a good time and he's not dying, like they're still farming in all three lanes. Like both teams are essentially at this point trading. Oh, Shatchlow actually going to be going down here in the bottom lane, gets auto attacked down by the Gak Master himself, the, the Viper. I'll dig that. that one hurts. So yeah, it's uh, well, now we're going to pick up. He's <laughs> debating denying his regen rune for his Magnus. That's just when game. you pray to God your mouse doesn't break and you Radiant just accidentally kill it. Is under attack. <laughs> They're moving down here though. After the troll ended up TPing earlier, uh, rather back to base, they're gonna see if they can make this move together as four. And maybe find a punish here on the Mr. Viper. Any TPs for the others? Let's look at it. Mag just takes the walk and then comes back home. So far, pretty uh, 
pretty slow early game from both teams. But I think a lot of it's just due to the fact that Gambit was able to avoid the really bad lane matchup of the, the Sand King Tusk into the Void. Because that Void would have just completely suffered in the mid lane he's owning. He's actually highest, uh, tied for highest CS currently with the Troll Warlord. It's pretty crazy. I mean, I would have thought that Mag might have been able to get it with, a, with the Empower and also having the same pulling blade. Avoids a superbly strong laner against other melee, especially when the form of harass coming from that melee is either through solely autos or one spell that does like a, a chunk of damage with no stun attached, right? Because you can just time walk off all the damage. Yeah. Now you're able to pressure back, but they do bring in the Tuscan. This could be a little bit of a problem now. They do have level six. RP is going to be there. They use it on him, but he does have time walk when he comes out of this. And he's just, oh no, stunned again. He managed to take a lot of it off. Kronos, you're only onto one. Let's be a little bit careful. Another shockwave comes through, almost dead. And well, it looks like the Void ends up saving his life again with those stick charges. They get out. That was, oh man, just by the skin of his teeth. If he didn't have that 17 charge wand, he would have definitely been dead there, 100%. Top lane looks like they're doing a little bit of a movement here too. Better bring down Cheshire Cat. You have the stun available. Misses, but the shockwave will be enough to find that kill. So Big then picks one up. Two now on the board for Gambit. This is when it starts to get a bit scary. You know, the Omni's got phase boots. He's got that level four purification. Might be going for the drums into the Yules. We've been seeing a lot of that as well. Just run really fast, stop people from being able to TP out and just run them down basically and kill them. Uh, so. This is kind of the point where the, the pressure is going to start to mount. Unfortunately, the first Chrono was not spectacular. It was more of just a saving utility. But I think in this type of game, the Void is more of a, a backup, just in case the push doesn't really go super well, and also just supplements it in the fact that he, he does offer some team fight control, which they were obviously lacking beforehand. Yeah. I'm wondering now if like they just go mass aura build, almost like as crazy as it might be, you know, Helm of the Dominator on one of these heroes. It looks like the Viper's going to be going for a medallion. Like, just try and push that tempo super fast. And yeah, there's the drums build that you were talking about for Omni Knight queued up. Uh, did decide to go for the Soul Ring first. Need that mana regen. But things looking pretty good. Got double Seder also. Yeah, double Seder is so much regen, actually. They get the 5.5 .5 base health regen aura. That thing's crazy. Double Hadouken, too. Can't, uh... Like, it's 320 damage, if you think about it, which is basically the equivalent of a level 4 nuke, just by having those two creeps. Yeah. And, I mean, you look at this Crow Warlord, he has a lot of armor, but not a whole hell of a lot in terms of other ways to stay alive. He's a little bit slower. They find the pullback, and now going to be able to get the stomp double Hadouken, as you are saying, the purification, and for your there's a kill. I even got that offensive null field, man. So it gets like the extra 10% magic resistance uh, reduction as well. There's a lot of synergy, man, in this team. I really like the the Chen Rubik Omni. There's just so much that you can do with the, these types of heroes in the early game because Rubik is notorious for having kind of a weak laning phase. But the Chen just fixes like every single problem that Rubik has. Just a really nice pairing. And this is something that you had mentioned, like being one of the main issues was like letting that Chen through. It's why so many people are banning it. They are going to start to try and get this power going right now uh, and going to clear through some of the Ancient Sacks. It's just going to be a nice help, but again, only level 2 on that right now. Troll Warlord has a long way to go before he becomes a hero in this game. Yeah, even with the kind of aggro lane that he was dealing with, it still manages to pull out with the highest CS right now, and obviously the stacks are going to kind of catapult him into the, the number one Maybe net worth. It's going to be close. Like, there's so many heroes in this game who have pretty much the same freaking net worth. Yeah. Like, how often do you Radiant's see every core and every lane top. farming? <laughs> and doing, yeah, doing a great job of it. It was just like a very passive, let's let everybody Radiant's get what they want. Um, and Radiant's right now, I am a little bit concerned about the Dire team. They're doing a good job here of splitting up the map, making sure they're getting towers while theirs are being pressured. They know they can't fight top right now. And so... It is going to be some TPs back. They find the Chronosphere as well. On to one, but Troll Warlord maybe going to be able to walk away from this one. Trying to look for a bash, not getting it. And they do end up RP just to walk away from the Omni Knight. But they killed off the Troll, and honestly, he might end up going down regardless. They've got the Fade Bolt in a second if they wanted to. Actually, don't have the mana for it, but Cheshire Cat phase with Ward. Purification gets the kill. So they lose the Tier 2. They save their Tier 1. 
That was rough. That was a really bad exchange, yeah, for SM. That that was absolute pain. They lose two towers in a row. They waste RP. The hero still dies. They lose troll. Like even with the stacks and stuff, that ooh, that's a big loss. Look at the the net worth lead now. Just after that little exchange, it's already four thousand in favor of Gambit. Well, oh, and they're gonna find the Rubik here. He is going to maybe stay alive. They turn to fight. They bring in the Viper as well. Cheshire Cat, he's going to be able to give him another punch right there to the side. A Burst Strike comes through from Sasha. Happy Center is open to Hand of God. They also have the GA and Repel is over there as well. This has just gone tragic as Radiant are taking no prisoners. Gambit streaming forward, trying to take down the Straw Warlord. They are going to throw out a cast, which is going to bounce between the two of them. Death Ward out as well. Maybe a little bit of a fight back here from SM, but this Viper is so freaking tanky and they can even switch over to the null field again if they want for defensive. Doesn't look like they need to. Just gonna walk it off. The shards were very, very nicely placed there because it stopped the Omni from getting a straight path to the Viper to heal. So there was actually a small window where, you know, potentially the Viper could have been killed, but unfortunately they're kind of lacking in the damage department right now. That was even like committing the Death Ward and the Maledict on top of that. Now sure, you know, Sand King wasn't there to throw on the Epi to boost, but it's kind of a a rough situation right now here for SM. They, they need a, a team fight to go favorably for them. And it feels like that's so difficult. You've got all these heroes that are just incredibly stacked up right now. Viper's about to have a Solar Crest. And to me, this item always just feels so strong early in the game and almost impossible to deal with. It's definitely going to be rough. Like, the, the main thing that they were worried about before was the epicenter uh, of the team fight. But besides that, the magic damage output just really isn't super threatening especially to a hero like viper so having that supplement of the, the armor and the evasion for the one hero on the team and the, the death ward that actually do that physical damage it's just really nice kind of itemization coming in from gambit they know exactly what their lineup is supposed to do yeah well and i, I don't know how i feel about the like battle fury for the void next and the the midas on the chen um, it does feel to me like maybe they could try and accentuate this lead, although that being said, they're just running at him anyways, and it almost doesn't matter. RP, though, on to three. Maybe a way to turn it back around. They don't follow up with the skewer, though. They end up losing Magnus. They have taken down the Rubik, and now they've gone a bit too far. Had the skewer been there with the Empowered Troll, it might have been enough, but a double from Big Num. And they end up losing four heroes. Yeah, that RP was probably about as good as it was going to get. Unfortunately, there was no Epi, there was no Death Ward. Uh, I'm not even sure really where Veliar was. I don't know if he ran away from that or if he wasn't there in the first place. But yeah, this is uh, this is getting real bad real fast. I think at some point it might just be better to not defend your tower and then just wait for the high ground at the very least and try to split up the lanes a bit. Like you got a Sand King, you got a Magnus with a Blink Dagger. Actually, they, they both have Blink. So maybe that's why they were so eager to take the engagement. But with the, the fights failing this hard, if you keep ramming your face at this and it doesn't work, you're just going to get ran over. Like, the game is just going to end. Yeah. And, I mean, it's already getting to that point where it might happen soon. You talked about, you know, the strength of this lineup at pushing down towers, but also going in securing Roshan, which it looks like they're planning on doing now. You have that Solar Crest on the Viper. It's going to fall rather rapidly. They need to be a little bit careful, but RP is still on cooldown for 40 seconds. They get the lift as he went for the skewer, able to steal away in power now, too, so they can give that back to their void. Looking for a Chronosphere, possibly. They're trying to split up so they don't both get hit by it. And it looks like they are going to call it off, but he snowballs oh, he back baited in. Him. He baited him because he thought he was going to get Chronoed. Uh, that was sick, actually. I thought he was going to go for the, the Chrono after the fact, but I guess he wanted more than one hero, or he wants to save it for just uh, protecting themselves from going for Roche. Yeah. That was a really heads-up play from the Void. You don't see a lot of stuff like that. All right. Naya Maria. New hot guy on the block. Uh, well, Roche is dead, and they are coming in right now. A little bit too little too late. They drop down a ward, which is immediately going to be taken out as well, as you believe. Man. Andy? Oh, wait, wait a minute, though. We do have RP available. They're wrapped around behind and still under a smoke as they're going to go for the epicenter. It's on to two of them. They're looking for that opening and everybody to group together, but they're not grouping together from Gambit. Still staying spread out. They're not able to find it. GA has already been popped. Maybe they go for another round of this in a second, but... Ah, it doesn't look like it. So that is going to be three dead. It's about the best they could have hoped for. And Chronosphere now has solo caught the Troll Warlord. 
he is going to go down most likely. A skewer away, another lift up from the Rubik, and a little blink out of there. He's able to make his escape, as to is the troll, but a bash. Oh, the first hit bash. Feels real, real bad. Everyone who plays Dota just winced a bit when they saw that, because we've all been there, you know? Oh, yeah. But yeah, this lineup coming in from Gambit just really well done. I really love the way they lamed it too. It's a 14k net worth lead in the 17 minute game. Yeah. All props to Gambit. They've been doing a fabulous job here with it, and they are looking to try and take down that first tier one tower. It is just not coming online quickly enough at all for the rest of the heroes. And there's been moments where it felt like the team fight could have worked, but I mean, they got three catapults knocking at their door. The other heroes are taking it. He managed to stun there. And now with no Chrono Spheries, well, still going to drop low and dies to the Fade Bolt. Buys back from the Tusk. They got to get something here. RP on to two, lift to turn. He has oh, RP no. stolen, he's oh, gonna no. turn back around. Don't do it to him, he doesn't even need to. Manscore doesn't have the mana to cast it. But they end up taking down the troll. They take down the Sand King, and good game, well played, is called. It was quick. It, it was quick and brutal. That was definitely not a PG-13 Dota game, I'll tell you that much. That was, uh, that was a that was a 18k lead at 18 minutes. <laughs> that was just absolute domination. The crazy part was, is that SM, all three of their lanes actually did okay. The troll got farm. He had the highest CS. They stacked for him. They gave him the empower. He took the stacks, and then they continually tried to defend towers. And every single time they tried to defend it with uh, defend one of the towers, it was just an unmitigated disaster. Yeah. They never won a single fight. And then, when you're playing against a chat lineup, if you never win a single engagement, and every single engagement ends with you losing buildings and the fight, that is the epitome of a snowball game. I guess. Do you put this on then the Chen? Like, obviously, draft win 100%. Uh, there are probably things that SM could have done better uh, in the middle of the game, but it felt like they were always fighting a losing battle. Do you ban out it, the Chen? I think that, obviously, the Chen was a big problem and a, a large reason as to why they were able to run this type of lineup. But I think that in a game like this, it was more... Um, it was more of both, right? Like, the draft was obviously good from Gambit, but they also played poorly. Like, they took all these fights and every single fight they didn't get the heroes that they were going for and like even when they went mid for the first time they commit three heroes they chrono the guy or they, they get chrono by him and they don't kill him and then they just lose a building and then it happens again where they defend a tower and they lose two buildings and then they lose another team fight and another team fight and more buildings and it's just like they didn't really use their lineup that well because i think with a, a magnus with a blink and a stacking with a blink you can push the side lanes like, you can actually force them back. You can take something off the map from them. You have this troll who had a pretty decent start. You don't have to throw bodies at every single tier one. It's actually okay to sack a tower or two as long as you're getting something in return. But because they didn't play that way, and they committed 100% to every defense and just got blasted for it, it it's going to look really bad. Well... We'll see if they can turn around game number two right around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. Gambit versus SM. And we'll be back to see if they can get more than two kills in the next one. Stay tuned, everybody. More to come in just a bit.